Ladies and gentlemen, KK Mirror, welcome to the daily update. Hope you guys had a good day trading today. Market is up about 0.5% on the S&P. Uh, NASDAQ is pretty much flat there. Semiconductor is pretty much only red today. Everything else is green. Looks like Dow's green, half a percentage. Small caps made a move, 1%. Transport, same. Banks, same. Energy did make a bigger move today. 2% update for the uh, energy and oil there. Biotech is up about 1%. Uh, added, I've added a healthcare. Their healthcare is about one uh, percent today. Uh, home builders, one point five percent. Utilities, same. Retail, uh, about one percent. And their emerging market is down a little bit. Grayscale, Bitcoin is uh, down today, about five percent negative. Gold, silver, miners. Uh, they continue to kind of be lethargic here, while the uh, dollar has been finding some strength last couple of weeks. Treasury bond pretty much flat. VIX popped a little bit. Let's stick with the spider. 65 minute chart here so um this is why we stick with the trend this is why i say things like benefit of the doubt goes to the buyers right we've been saying that for the last couple of weeks now and yesterday if you're too concerned about this late day sell off if you're shorting it into the closing well this morning it really disappointed you so this is why you can't rely on these kind of a late day one hour type of candle it is futile trying to figure out you know with looking at one candle you really have to understand the trend the flow of things this is what i've been preaching about for the last year and a half here right so uh, we gapped up right we gapped up this morning decent size gap up and then we did see that move on the first hour some fluctuation on the second third four fifth six pretty much the entire day we rallied to the upside um, S&P pretty much uh, sandwich is S&P actually didn't do too well compared to some of the other uh, sectors there and keep in mind some of these sectors did struggle last year uh, a lot of these sectors are coming back very very strongly this year so and this is why you know not surprised to see Nasdaq and semiconductor still kind of a uh, trying to figure out what it's gonna do but I think there's still a lot of those hyper growth stocks trying to make that uh, bottoming, uh, you know, activities to potentially get back up. Some of the large tech stock, like something as Am something like Amazon, haven't done anything this in since actually last July. So if you went long on Amazon last July, which is a year ago, you haven't made any money. Same similar story with Apple. I see, I see that Facebook, uh, Microsoft, uh, stuff like that's been making a move. Netflix is also another giant tech stock just hasn't done anything this year and that's great because some of these large tech stocks been correcting through time they were extremely overheated after covid and the uh, laggers actually making a huge move this year this is why i've been preaching especially in this type of environment it's good to have that well-balanced portfolio that way you can still be part of the market you know if you're concentrated only on hyper growth stocks since last year you'd be down about 50 40 percent this year while the s p is actually up 14 15 percent this year and that's not fun right so anyway so uh what can we expect going forward because this market seems to be unstoppable right this is what i mean when I want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers, the market just uh, discovered this, um, you know, uh, pivot here, right? So you can see this is a new pivot. The market just found out about it today with the gap up, right? You can see that prior resistance, 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 and then a resistance here for short term, little correcting through time for a day or two. We saw a gap up just, just conveniently up above it. Because you can see even last night on the last hour, it's a little bit jittery action there, a little bit insecurity right on that resistance level, right? This is a resistance. I'm calling it a pivot today. Why? Because we broke above it, meaning there's a chance this resistance can turn into a support should there be any kind of correction or a you know, pull back um, going into tomorrow and early next week. So if we do see a pullback, that uh, pivot is a level to kind of watch, which is currently trading at uh, or residing at 429 or so. We got 428, 420, uh, 428 or 429, 428. My short-term moving average is currently residing at 428. You can see all the battle was fought right here, right? When that, 
buyers reclaimed that short term moving average to the upside ever since then you can see it's been just riding it all day long man every single day we haven't even begun to retest that short term moving average even if this thing comes down we got that pivot there we got the gap area support and my short term moving average is residing just underneath that so it has to go through some of those levels before we can get to that short term moving average again all these levels are going to provide short term support and why is this market continue to move higher like this was well, this is kind of the, what happens when 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 you see a huge um you know contraction in the market after covid right we see 35% just very abrupt sell up. It scares the hell out of everybody. Everybody start fleeing, everybody exiting, everybody looking for and preparing for the Great Depression, right? And everybody was extremely scared last year. And when you see this market going higher and higher and higher and higher, people are FOMOing up here. People who didn't participate all throughout last year, they're getting back in. People who are in cash, they're getting back in. People who, are, who might have closed out their entire portfolio with loss and COVID lows in 2020, they're getting back in. What about the bears? There were bears everywhere last year. You guys remember all throughout last year, I mean, bears were ramping everywhere, <clears throat> right? That the Great Depression is on its way. They're pretty much incinerated uh, this year and late last year. They're turning bullish. And, uh, you know, institutions are holding and the bulls are holding. And because of this, we're seeing these very short term fluctuations and how quickly, <clears throat> how quickly those dip gets bought out. And you see, this is a thing about, in a, you know, you know, rolling bull market. Because what happens is, you you know, this is a very, very difficult market to short because this market is very, very adamant. You can see this is where you're going to get chopped to death trying to short with your put options. Little yellow, little FOMO, little out of the money, little weekly trying to hit that jackpot. It ain't going to work. If anything, it's probably better to buy the dip after, you know, after some sharp decline because you can see we've seen these kind of a v-shaped reversals but you can see how when the market comes down before it comes down it just gets so lethargic and when i actually do see a pullback most bears get tired of it and they get exhausted and they close out their puts and then once they do that market tends to come down later you guys know exactly what i'm talking about let's check out that also and see if we can extract any more information so i drew that little box over there because i wanted to see how long it can kind of you know oscillate back and forth at the top of this band and then this trend can potentially continue higher so i think as long as we kind of stay in this box the oscillator i think we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt and that's a one way to measure it you guys remember the oscillator is never the um you know, authority here is the price action, right? Oscillator is gonna be the insubordinate to the price action and the supplement to the price action. So obviously we've seen some of these levels as potential support, the pivot, the gap area, the short-term moving average. Obviously we're gonna, you know, you know, analyze all of that and then supp supplement to that would be the oscillator right oscillator will be that offer affirmation tool not a confirmation tool affirmation to oscillators are never a confirmation uh, tool it's affirming what you already figured out in your price action analysis so going into tomorrow man i want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers should there be any kind of slide going into tomorrow morning i've given you the levels kind of watch again keep in mind uh, i have an announcement this tomorrow will be the last video for the month of july right so entire month of july i'm gonna take a break uh, and in market is so lethargic and for you know what I mean and so I think and I'll tweet things out as much as I can um, you know uh, in the month of July you know I'm gonna try to tweet it tweet things out every day on my Twitter account kind of 2k Kim and then I'll give you guys uh, you know where the oscillator is at give you guys some of these levels so uh, keep in mind also that uh, my special June invitation it will be closing uh in four days so it'll be uh, july 5th right next monday or coming monday the market will be closed uh with the independence day so that's that night will be closed so if you don't take advantage of this uh you can head up on my website here and you can take advantage of the yearly those are annual specials right that i'm kind of currently uh you know uh providing 
um, if you guys been thinking about joining Traders Club here, um, released. Uh, you can you can watch this video right here, just keep telling you about you know what's all about. But I released the market bubble. The biggest one is Honest Way Research Report for my members. So I I've also wanted you to kind of get hold of this and understand the secular and the macro sense of this of this market. If you understand the big picture, you won't be uh, struggling with anxieties and neediness and desperation. As you guys know, market can sniff that out and punish you very harshly. So understanding the big picture, where the market is going in a macro sense, a secular sense, it will put you more up in more ease and not freak out and panic every time we see a little bit of fluctuation so that's kind of what i'm all about is understanding a big picture growing your account exponentially using the compound growth strategy uh you know having that well-balanced portfolio and also um if you join premier vip i also implement options trading right and to boost that uh portfolio anyway so you guys enjoy the rest of this uh evening I'll come back for you tomorrow night, and that will be the last video for the month of July, for the entire month of July. I want to spend more time with my family. My families are coming in here. Uh, from I'm from Texas and New York City, so I, I'm you know I want to spend most of my time with them, and I think it's a good time to do that. I didn't have plan on this until I saw the way the market is moving. It's, the market has been moving. I think the best way for you, especially for long-term investors and position traders for like myself, is to check market in the first I don't know you know first two, you know 20, 30 minutes or something like that earlier during the day, and then check towards the end of the night. Don't even like try to look at the market all day long and just wait this market to move for you that's gonna be not healthy it won't be healthy for your for your uh, well-being and peaceful uh, mindset that you need to continue to uh, cultivate because you know what every day we all go through stuff and why waste your energy in the market again focusing on the long term I believe that you can uh, you know you can really uh, have that you know experience Understand the long term, not letting the short term market volatility get to. And the only way to truly get there is to fully understand where the market is going in the secular and macro sense. And this, this is what this, um, you know, uh, research. And there's on the, there are a lot of researches there, like about five or six or so. They can, it's still very much valid. Uh, you know, there's a, another research report for members that you know I believe that S&P 500 is going to 16,000, right? So anyway, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow for the last video for the month of July. We'll go from there.